Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 70. Uh, it's been a while. It's been over eight months since I did one of these, so I'm not sure I can still call it the Tip of the Day, but that's what it started with, and I guess I'll stick with that for now. Uh, I've been away for some time, and I am really pleased to be back doing more of these Tips of the Day for you. For today's tip of the day, I'm going to keep it very simple because there's a lot of new features of Source Filmmaker that I'm also beginning to learn about, and I haven't used Source Filmmaker a ton since I stopped doing the tips of the day. Uh, real life kind of intervened, and I ended up having to do a lot of stuff. Didn't get a whole lot of opportunities to play with some of the new features, so I'm still learning them, but rest assured there will be more good tips coming. Uh, for now, though, one of the questions as I was going through my email, um, by the way, I have over 3,000 emails. Um, one of the questions that came up more than once was, how do you put the different masks on the pyro? Uh, how do you do that without making it clip and so forth? And a lot of people already know about this, but a lot of people don't, especially people who are still kind of new to Source Filmmaker. So this is an opportunity for me to show you a couple of things, how locks work. Uh, again, and demonstrate some additional features of the way locks work and to show you how you can, you know, customize the way the pyro looks. And it also involves a new feature of Source Filmmaker that has come been deployed since I did the last tip of the day, namely something called body groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can replace the pyro's mask with uh, the the one, the, the community created item called the last breath. Uh, so I've got a pyro here, and uh, we can see he's just your stock bog standard pyro. And I'm going to create an animation set for a new model, and I'm going to find the uh, gas mask for the pyro, and it's called Pyro Halloween Gas Mask. It's this one here, the, uh, the Last Breath. So I'm going to open that up, and as you can see, if I do something like this and uh, grab the gas mask, Excuse me. Uh, there it is. If I grab the gas mask and try and put it on the pyro, it won't work. Let me, let me center. By the way, Alt-V will do that. If you're ever curious how to do that, Alt-V will uh, put the handle right in the center of your viewpoint. So makes it a little easier sometimes to manipulate things. But as you can see, if I were to try and put this on the pyro, it just it wouldn't work because... If, if soon as I um, as soon as I put it on the pyro, uh, it won't. It'll just clip through his existing head, and it won't look right. You see, um, even if I put it over there, you're going to get this sort of weird effect, and that is by design. The pyro is he doesn't actually have a head under there. The model that face is the model. So what we need to actually do essentially is just replace his head. So the way we're going to do that is use a technique, or excuse me, a feature of Source Filmmaker called body groups. So to use body groups, you can right-click on the uh, Pyro's model, and down here you see where it says Set Body Groups. And if you expand these menus, you'll see different ones. Uh, the head, the grenades, the backpack, and you the ones, for example, like this one, I don't have any other options. But you can turn things off, like I can take away his grenades. I can put them back. I can set body group head and take away his head. Now he no longer has a head. He is the headless pyro. So how do we correct this? Uh, how do we how do we put this new head on on it in its place? And that's quite easy. If you expand the um, the animation set editor tree for the Halloween gas mask, you will see that it has bip spine three, bip neck, and bip head. And if we look at the pyro, we will see that he has a bip spine 3, bip neck, and bip head. And if you notice, these um, are very, very similar looking to each other. They all, you know, there's three of them. So what we're going to do is we are going to lock the pyro's uh, elements of the same name to uh, the gas mask elements. So I'm going to drag the pyro's bip spine 3 to bip spine 3 of the gas mask. Remember, you go from the pyro to the mask, not the other way around, or it won't work right. Then I'm going to grab the neck, and I'm going to drag it there. Then I'm going to drag the head, and I'm going to drag it there. And then I'm going to select the gas mask, and I'm going to say, not default, but zero. There we go. And now the pyro has a new head. How the pyro got his head. And now I can just collapse this. 
Uh, and I can manipulate the pyro's head by, for example, grabbing, I'm going to grab his bip head. And now he's just as poseable as he ever was, because although I turned off the body group, this is the thing that's that you need to understand. I turned off the body group, but that did not remove the bones. And so by locking the three bones, the head, the neck, and the spine to the uh, uh, to the to the models uh, bones of the same name, we have essentially made the the this new head sort of a shadow head, and it follows. And since all three of those points are locked to the right points in the uh, um, on the pyros model, manipulating the pyros head, neck, and uh, spine bones causes the head to work the way it should, and you don't get that um, weird effect of having the pyros actual gas mask underneath it, which would look something like this. If I turn the body group and put his uh, head back on, see you get this sort of peculiar effect, which is not what you would want. So I'm going to turn his head back off. And that is how you can replace the pyro's head with a new head, with one of the new gas masks or a new element in there. Uh, and it also demonstrates how you can use multiple locks. You know, you know you, I, I, I locked the spine to the spine, the head to the head, and the neck to the neck. Uh, and that makes this Halloween gas mask model, and if I if I do something like, uh, well, actually I can't do that. Uh, the Halloween gas mask model will now follow the pyro's uh, uh, bones, just as though it were the actual head. So it's a way of sort of shadow replacing elements. Of course, the model underlying it has to support it. Uh, it the body groups are built into the model, and uh, I am not sure how that's done. I assume it is done by uh, the designer and when the MDL file is compiled, but uh, that is something I will look into. Uh, so if the model supports the body group, you can turn it on and off. Uh, the pyro's backpack can be turned off, for example. His grenades can be turned off and his head can be turned off. Uh, other models support their own body groups. For example, the medic can have his head turned, or excuse me, not his head, but his, uh, his medigun backpack can be turned off and the um, you can give him that look that he had in... Um, um, meet the uh, whichever one it was where he was the, the Archimedes one I can't remember which um, oh meet the medic <laughs> oh it's late can you tell I'm a little tired but there you go that is your tip of the day number 70 a little rough after eight months I'm sure but uh, it will get better with time and uh, I would like to solicit your feedback and your suggestions for new tips of the day I've already got a few that folks have uh, have suggested to me and I'd love to hear yours if you have a tip and you haven't gone through the 6970 um, tips of the day that I've already gotten done, uh, take a look at those and make sure that a tip that you're suggesting hasn't already been covered. Uh, if it has not, I will certainly consider it. And uh, I thank you for watching, as always. Uh, I thank you for tuning in and subscribing uh, and for just generally being cool people. And I really appreciate it. Uh, all of the great feedback, even while I was gone, um, I do, do appreciate it deeply. Thank you all. And I look forward to the next Source Filmmaker tip of the day. In the meantime, I am your friend Jimmer Lins, and I hope you have a wonderful day.